What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to talk about traveling with harmonicas. Alright, so like I said before the break, today we're going to talk about how to travel with your harmonica. Uh, I've owned and played harmonicas for more than 10 years now and I've traveled internationally around the globe, air travel, plane travel, uh, boats, buses, trains, all kinds of different modes of transportation and I carry a harmonica with me wherever I go. And I, over those years, have learned a few secrets about how to travel safely and uh, happily with harmonicas. Now, let's talk a little bit about travel philosophy and a little bit about bringing harmonicas with us. I firmly believe that the humble diatonic harmonica is the best instrument to travel with. Um, it's small, it's lightweight, and you can play all kinds of wonderful music on just this little instrument. It's a great way to make friends while you're traveling, it's a great way to break the language barrier because music is the international form of communication. And it's also a great way to entertain yourself during the long, boring stretches of travel. So it's a great idea to carry harmonicas with you when you go places. The problem is, how many should I carry? In what way should I carry them? How can I carry them so that the harmonica is not going to get damaged? Uh, that it's not going to be a real pain to find the harmonica when I need it? And if you're a fairly serious musician, how can I travel with uh, enough harmonicas and enough keys so that I can play the music that I want to play with the musicians that I encounter. So, firstly, if you're new to the harmonica world, you've probably got at least one harmonica, and it probably came in a little plastic case like this. The plastic case is fine for your one harmonica, and if that's all you have, it'll work. It's better to have any kind of case than no case at all. If you go barebacked with your harmonica like this, Somewhere along the way, it's going to get crushed, the, the covers are going to be crushed in, uh, junk is going to get in the holes and block up all your reeds, and pretty soon you're going to have a non-functioning harmonica that you're going to have to throw out in the middle of your travels, and that's not what you want. Plastic case will be fine, but there are some downsides. Main one for me is this, right? That rattle can get real old, and if you want to carry more than one harmonica, that means you've got two, three, four, five of these kind of things floating all around in your bag. But you can see there's not a real economy of space. The cases are pretty big and you'll soon quickly take up a lot of space in your luggage. And if you're traveling minimally, carry-on only or carry-on and personal item only, you'll know that space is at a premium. Now let's first talk about Lee Oscar brand harmonicas. And they were probably the first to innovate something beyond the, the standard plastic uh, clip case that most harmonica manufacturers are still using. They have this really interesting modular system for their uh, cases. They're still plastic, but they have this interlocking system where you can build sort of custom cases, all right? So right away, you can organize your harmonicas in, in the, the order of keys. They open from the end, right, which is a little different from before, so you can have them all open like this on a table. You can easily see and access your harmonicas, play them and put them back, and then you can easily close them up and take them all with you. Because they connect together, they stay together in your bag so they don't get all over the place. The downside, they still rattle. But eventually you're probably going to want to upgrade from these as well. Honer and uh, some of the Chinese manufacturers are now shipping harmonicas in these sort of zippered, soft shell, clam shell kind of cases. This is a Lucky 13 harmonica, and, and as you can see, it fits nicely inside of this dedicated clam shell that is uh, rigid, it's got some plastic inside, but covered in cloth. So, no shake, right? So that's already a lot better, right? And yet it still offers a lot of protection from being crushed, so much better than just a loose harmonica in your bag. I just want to note these sort of zipper cases are common for uh, chromatic and other styles of harmonica as well. They can be really useful if all you want to travel with is one or two harmonicas and you can keep them organized in your bag. After you get to three or four harmonicas, these individual cases aren't going to do it anymore. At that juncture, 
you may be thinking, I've got 12 harmonicas, I need me a harmonica case, right? This is the venerable Mississippi saxophone case from, uh, from Fender. It's sexy as hell with this sort of tweed look. It's got all kinds of cred, and you think, if I got that, people will take me seriously. Well, they may or they may not, uh, but I'll tell you that this is a real pain to travel with. Now, I used this for many years as my main harp case, even when I was playing on the street. Uh, and just carrying it around town on the bus was a pain because you have to carry it like a briefcase. There's no backpack strap, there's no shoulder strap, there's no way to carry this and have your hands free, right? You have to walk in the door with your dark sunglasses and your fedora hat and this in your hand. The beauty of harmonica is that it's a small instrument. So why make your life more difficult than it needs to be by carrying it around in a big old harp case like this? So as much as I love that case, no, off to the side it goes. That brings me to the multi-case or multi-harmonica uh, soft case. This is one uh, from uh, Honer. I like it pretty well because it has no markings on the outside, which if you're traveling, that's really nice for security purposes. Nobody knows really what this is. It doesn't look like it's got anything too fancy in it. This kind of case may say steal me because it seems like, oh, it's instruments, musical instruments, right? This particular sort of uh, nonchalant style uh, case is kind of nice because it doesn't scream that you've got several hundred dollars of harmonicas inside. And when you open it up, you'll see that it actually has space for at least seven harmonicas in this case, right? Um, it's got some velour padding. It's got these individual um, slots for your harmonicas to stick in, and the slots hold the harps in place pretty well. The case has some plastic underneath it, so it provides crush protection, and yet it's um, cushioned all around so it doesn't rattle at all inside your bag. All in all, if all you need is seven harmonicas, this is not a bad case at all. Um, it does have a couple of downsides. Number one, these are cut out to fit Honer harmonicas, in particular uh, Special 20s. So Special 20 fits perfectly in here. Suzuki Heartmaster, you really got to force it in there. The sidle doesn't fit at all. The other downside is that you'll see that the spacing is pretty wide in here, meaning that it's nice and protected, but it's not as economical in terms of space um, as it possibly could be. So that means that the si for the size of this case, you're limited to only seven harmonicas when you could probably fit easily 12 harmonicas side by side in, in the space that's actually encapsulated inside here. I recommend a generic clamshell case. This happens to be from Amazon. This is Amazon Basics. I think this is their electronics clamshell. And if we open this case up, we will see that we have some great organization in here. I happen to only have three harmonicas on this side, but you can fit easily 12 to 14 harmonicas side by side. Um, you can have them either totally flat like this and fit fewer, or you can have them uh, standing up like this. You can fit more. You can easily get these harmonicas in and out. You can lay it flat on the table in front of you when you're playing. And what's really cool is that on this other side, you have space for larger harmonicas to fit vertically in here. Here's a couple of bass harps and, a, and an orchestral harmonica. You can fit chromatics in here. Heck, you could even fit a small stick mic and a cable. Hey, that would be pretty cool. And not only that, it has this little internal divider with some zipper pouches here, which are great for carrying a few little accessories like your repair kit, which I will talk about at the end of this video. The only thing that I found was a downside is that I don't usually travel when I travel minimally with bass harmonicas. Like bass harmonicas are not really what you think of when you think of minimal travel. So I wanted a case that would fit just diatonic harmonicas, that would be economical in terms of its use of space, and yet still protective of my instruments um, at the same time. And after searching for years and years and years, I finally found this guy. Right? This is the Seidel Belt Pack 12 harmonica case. Um, it is padded, but doesn't have the same sort of rigid plastic underlying like these clamshell cases do, so a little less protective perhaps than these cases over here, but still very well protected. Um, if you open the top, you will see that it fits 12 harmonicas vertically inside. Uh, here's one that is uh, empty. You can see all of these little elastic dividers in there. So the harmonicas are not touching uh, themselves, so they don't rattle together, and they're not going to get scratched or anything like that. Um, so I find that really, really nice. And the cool thing is that 
Um, this offers the most internal organization, uh, sort of protection from rattling and banging around, while at the same time fitting as many harmonicas as possible in the minimum amount of space. If it's 12 harmonicas and if you put two more, you can fit 14 on it, one on either side right here. What's really cool is that it stands upright on the table and you can put it down right here. You can see your harps if you label them on the ends, which you should do. Uh, and you can pick them out like this and put them back, no trouble at all. Uh, this, to my knowledge, uh, and my long experience traveling with harmonica, is the best way to fit the most number of harps in the least number of space. Now, do I always need to travel with 12 harmonicas? This is not light. This weighs a good couple of pounds, right? And if I'm going minimal, uh, every ounce counts, right? Every ounce counts. So do I need to travel with 12 harmonicas? Probably not. If I'm a gigging musician, if I'm going to play dates, if I'm going to go and sit in um, on open mic night or something like that, I need to be ready to roll with any key in any position, okay, maybe it's worth traveling with 12. If that's the point of my travel, it's definitely worth traveling with 12. If on the other hand, I'm just a tourist, and I want to go, uh, you know, I'm going to, uh, I don't know, Shanghai and Beijing just to see what's there. Don't know what I'm going to encounter, but I know that there's a chance that I, I'm going to want to play harmonica. Then I go with a fewer number of harps. In fact, I have this little case, I think this was for a Leatherman or something like that, um, but it fits three harmonicas, right? Three harmonicas side by side. And for me, that's the magic number for minimal travel. One harmonica is not enough for me because I often get bored with the sound of a, a one key of harmonica. So I often travel with a key of A in Richter regular blues layout. I love the, the sound of an A harp in, when I'm playing blues. And it's actually um, nice, the position layout for second position and third position work out so that the keys are fairly common, common enough for guitar players and that kind of stuff. I then often travel with a B flat natural minor, which I like to play reggae and do beatbox harmonica. And then finally I often travel with an easy third harmonica in the key of G, which works out for the kind of music I like to play with that, which is also reggae and a few other types of music. You may want to travel with just Richter tune harmonicas, and in that case I would suggest key of A, key of C, and key of G. Uh, they kind of cover the standard range, give you nice opportunities to play in second, third, first, and potentially fifth and twelfth positions if you know how to do that. Um, but definitely second and third and probably first. Um, you can play a lot of really great music and cover uh, a lot of very common situations in which you play blues or which you play sort of country, pentatonic kind of music like that. And that brings me to the last little bit about tips about traveling with harmonics, particularly traveling with harmonicas on planes, all right? Uh, I've traveled um, to many different countries and I brought various numbers of harmonicas with me. And almost always when it's more than one harmonica, uh, I get stopped at the security line in the airport and they search my bag and they, more often than not, what they're going for is my harmonica case. I finally ask a TSA person, what was it that, that, that set off the, the, the flag? Why did, you, why did you want to look at my harmonicas? And they told me that it was because the, when the harmonicas are side by side like this, in the x-ray, they look like magazine clips from handguns. So what I learned is whether you're carrying 12 harmonicas or 3 harmonicas, what you should do is always put them on top in your carry-on luggage. I travel with backpacks, so I always put them on top or in an outside pocket. Uh, and that way, if they do get flagged, they don't always get flagged, but they often do. It's easy to take them out and you're not going to get uh, delayed too long in the security line. If you want to be absolutely certain, especially if you're carrying 12 harmonicas in a case like this, take it out of your bag, put it into a bin by itself, let it go through the scanner, and they won't bother you at all. One potential situation in which you may actually get detained is if you try and travel with your harmonica repair kit. Right? Most of the stuff you, you won't need actually when you're just on the road because you, these are for retuning harmonicas from one layout to another. Um, in fact, if you try and travel with some of this stuff, like these sharply pointed um, files, TSA is going to get you, all right? At the very least, they're going to throw these out. At the very most, you may be sitting off to the side for a goodly amount of time when they call in their superiors, all right? And you just don't want to get into that kind of situation. 
So definitely no regular files, all right? To get around this, bring yourself a regular nail file, just an emery board. One other thing to think about is uh, bringing just a little bit of blue tack, all right? And that will help if the reed starts to go uh, a little high, you can make it go down a little bit, all right? Um, and that way you can just bring like a little emery board to file on the tip if the reed is a little too low, and you can bring a little blue tack to put on the tip if the reed is a little too high. Other than that, I like to bring these little plastic uh, pinker, plinkers. These are from, you know, little plastic flossers and just crack the whole end off. They usually have a little toothpick part. No one's ever going to stop you for that. These are really useful. You can plink reeds with them. You can clean mount gunk out from all the corners and crevices and that kind of stuff. I also bring with me these little shims. These are the little mylar shims that you get out of little security tags. You know, when you buy clothes or something at Ross or something like that, and they give you the tag with it. It's the little magnetic thing that makes the alarm go off if you're shoplift, right? So these are really useful for getting gunk, clearing gunk from between reeds in the reed slots, or even um, with a little bit of uh, practice, you can recenter a reed in the reed slot. So I often bring that in lieu of bringing a full-on reed branch, right? A toothpick, right? A, a, a standard toothpick for um, getting into the reed slot and pushing reeds up. And you don't even need to bring this with you because you're going to find this on your trip somewhere, right? So you will need to bring a screwdriver, all right? I really like these screwdrivers where you can um, just replace the head on them like this. And you can store um, uh, another couple of heads in the body like that. That way you can bring a slotted tip and you can bring a Phillips tip and you can bring a hex tip. And finally, what I'd like to say is that I've gone through a lot of different options. And there are even more out there that exist. Um, but really, what it comes down to is just bring the dang things with you. And really, I want to say that when you travel, no matter which solution you choose, from the clamshell cases to the belt pack to anything else, just choose a system that is not going to make it difficult for you. And that's really what I wanted to say today. Uh, hopefully, this video has been helpful. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed some of these tips. If you had, I'd really appreciate hearing about it in the comments, uh, comment section below. Please be sure to hit like if you liked it, subscribe if you're not already, and please share this channel with others who you think that would benefit from these kinds of videos. Catch you on the flip side.